Hello there! My name is Laura of Laura Colors 2, and I just wanted to give a shout out to Isabel for inviting me to join her on her channel. So today we'll be working out of Daydreams by Hannah Carlson. I'm going to be working on this page here. But as you well know, I do love my watercolor, so I printed it out on this Fabriano Studio Watercolor. This is Hot Press, which I prefer for also working with color pencil later. And it's 90 pounds, which will go through my printer from an inkjet printer. So here it is, and of course I've lightened it up as well. So I hope that you all are having a wonderful holiday season. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just getting my brush wet. I have a cup of water here. So I'm just swishing my brush around in the water and getting it loaded with water. The next thing that I'd like to do is I want to get the background wet with just the plain water before I even work with the paint. So here what I'm going to do is I want to choose where I want this water to go. So in my mind, I see this wing as being transparent and I see this as being a silvery white kind of outline. Um, around her. So I'm going to paint through that circle and I'll come back to it later and put it back in. I'm also going to paint through the flowers because I want them to have a frosty snowy feel. So I'm just going to tie the background and the flowers in together in one wash. And lastly, because I want her hair to feel soft, I'm also going to do her hair. <laughs> All right, let's get going then now that I have the idea. I'm just going to carefully paint around her face first, kind of get the scary stuff out of the way. And that way you can focus on the easier stuff without worry. So I'm just carefully going around. You can use a smaller brush if you like, but I like to use these big brushes and knock it all out really quick. So now I'm just kind of flowing a lot of water in there and getting it really good and saturated, kind of get the paper ready for the paint, just like we got the paint ready with the, so I'm going to skip this section as best I can. I'm not worried about being super precise. But yeah, just as we got the paint wet and get that ready to be used, now we're getting the paper wet and ready to be used because watercolor loves water. <laughs> so you can remember that. Okay, so now I'm just not worried about, I'm just kind of doing a blobby outline, not too precise. The only precise part I was really worried about is her face. All right, so let's see here. We're gonna go right on through this actually. Let's go ahead and ignore those wings like they're not even there. And this will give it transparent look later. Okay. So I kind of got to tilt my head a little to see if I missed any spots, but we'll find out when we start dropping paint. So let's start dropping paint. Here I'm going to use <laughs> my color chart here. I'm going to use the Windsor Newton French Ultramarine. This is a very common brand of paint and so readily available in most places. I'm going to get it pretty good and wet, load up my brush with a lot of paint, and I'm going to start from the top and work my way down, just dropping the paint in, and it's going to move and, and sh it's, it's a mover and a shaker, this, because we put a lot of water down. So I'm going to kind of push that paint until it's and in the right spot. I'm gonna go right on through the wing. You can still see the wing through that. Right, maybe what I'm gonna do is get the paint off of the brush by getting it wet and then kind of just brushing it on this towel until it's clean and dry. And what we're going to do is lift. So lifting is great and it really does allow you to make mistakes without as much fear. See, I just lifted the paint there. You just take a thirsty brush, 
I'm just lift the paint. Okay, let's load some more blue. Again, start at the top. I want the top to be darker than the bottom. All right. Now you can, of course, approach this with any color. So you can see I'm just taking my time around her face to get it a little more precise. Just take a little moment to kind of make sure the watercolor gets everywhere you'd like it to be. Now you can do this on any page that you like, and that's the beauty about watercolor backgrounds is they're so versatile and fun. And once you get used to doing them, they kind of just make themselves. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Like you can see all this very color variation and and these unusual shapes, I think that's what makes it so fun to look at once it's done. So here I'm adding a little more water just to kind of move this around a little more. And we're almost at the point now where we want to throw in that salt. So before I do that, I do want to get some of her hair color in. And I'm thinking about doing a nice dark brown. So I think to complement the blue of the background, we're just going to go with a nice dark brown hair. So let's grab, well, let's see, let's stick with Windsor and Newton and grab the Burnt Sienna. Now this will not be the finished hair, but again, just kind of throwing some color in there. What I'm really looking for is to get this color behind the wings here and start out that transparency look that we're going for. But you see, I ignored the place where it will be more opaque. There, that's this color here that we're looking at. So this is just the base layer for the hair. We're gonna come back and really work, work this hair a lot more later, but what you see here is the beginning base color. And this will really help the hair feel really transparent and soft because it's going to meld into that blue and be quite nice, I think, once we let it dry. So before it dries completely, now is the time to throw down the salt. The paper is wet but not puddly. There is some moisture on it. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's not super duper drippy. Um, it does have some moisture, but it's not um, soupy. So now's the time. I'm just going to actually just grind this coarsely. And this will create a really nice snowflake effect effortlessly. So you just kind of grind it wherever you'd like. Um, and I'm going to let that set until the watercolor is completely dry. So we're going to come back and see how it looks once it's dry. For this next bit, I am going to get the salt off the paper now that it's dry. You can see there's no longer any water left, it's just the loose salt. But some of the salt will stick to the paper. So I have here, this is just an old acrylic paintbrush. You just want something that's a little stiffer, the bristles. So I'm just gonna Quickly abrade the paper and you can see the crystals will kind of pop off here and there. Sometimes they get stuck. So I'm just going to go through this process. And after I'm done, I'm going to dump them in this bowl. So I'm going to speed this up and I'll meet you back here. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to take my same paintbrush that I was using here, this uh, half inch um, Princeton Neptune, this is the Synthetic Squirrel, and I really like how the background is really soft and her hair is really soft, and it's got like this neat 
texture to it. That's mostly from the salt and also just that um, that big wash that we did. Oh, here comes little Miss Abby girl, because you guys know she can't resist a cameo. Where are you going? Yeah, I thought so. Here she is. Hello, everybody. <laughs> All right, so this is a totally new day. Um, <laughs> my kitty distracted me and off I went. Um, so let's get back to this. So to do this, I have my uh, number 12 round and this is one of the Princeton Neptune synthetic squirrel brushes. It's a nice big brush. Uh, it'll hold plenty of water and um, paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get my brush wet. Um, it's not dripping, but it definitely is filled with water. And I'm going to use, let's see here, how about the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose. Um, so that is, I have a little color chart here, by the way. If you have a watercolor set like I do that's m mixed with different brands, I make a color chart and I write which, which one goes where, so that way I know where I'm looking. So that's what you see me looking at. So I'm going to just dip my brush in this rose. But as it is straight from the palette, if I were to put this on the page, it would be far too vibrant. So I'm just going to, it looks like I have some right here. I'm just going to drop this color right here on my palette and we're going to mix it. And we're going to mix it with the same blue that we used before. So I'm just going to get any excess color out of my brush. And then we used Winsor & Newton French Ultramarine before, I believe. We were using Winsor & Newton colors. So let's go ahead much better. So this doesn't have to be the exact purple we need because there's already a lot of blue on the page. But just around the areas that are really dark, I just want to add this color just to kind of give it a little bit more of a purpley vibe. You can see it's really subtle, but I think when it dries, of course I didn't mix enough of it, so let's go ahead and mix some more. Let's do that. So I hope that you're having a wonderful holiday season. I know uh, it's been a tough year for a lot of people, but hopefully you're in finding some time to enjoy the things that you love to do. So let's see, this is really dark now. That's because I have much more paint on my brush. So I'm just gonna water it down and move it around, which is fine. I'm gonna mix this into the hair, sort of like we did before with the blue layer. But again, avoiding the face. Now I will go over this again later on, once we're about finished with some actual snowflakes. Um, some spatter, oh that looks like a piece of salt I didn't get up, there we go. But for right now, this will do really well. Just to get us going here. You can see this purpley color just adds a little something to that blue. Just a little bit on the purple side. Okay. Alright. So as you can see, I just sort of let my brush run out of the color by the time we got down to this lighter area. So I think that'll do just fine. Now there is a, a water line starting to form here. So I'm just going to go back over it with my now almost dry brush. Kind of pick up that line before it becomes too solidified. Okay, we'll just wait for a minute there. And while we're waiting for that to finish, uh, kind of melding together, Let's just grab, really quickly, I believe we used the Windsor & Newton Burnt Sienna for her hair. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that color and I'm going to drop it into my purple color here. Maybe get a little bit more of that. Oh, here comes the little kitty again. And now we've made this really beautiful sort of maroon brown. Hi, sweetheart. So now we have the wing here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can definitely see the line art still. So while we have this... I'm just going to avoid that wing now and just put this over the hair and by avoiding that wing now it's going to be lighter. Just sort of, I think let's put some hair over her ear like so, just to kind of cover that up a little bit. There we go. Sorry about the background noise. All right, it was quiet when I began. Okay, there you have it. So that'll give us, start to give us a feeling like that wing is really um, transparent. But now just to kind of even bring that out a little more, I'm gonna grab some of that Windsor and Newton French Ultramarine and just make a little this purple concoction here. And just around the wing itself here now, I'm just gonna add more of this purpley blue color and avoid the wing itself. So again, we're going to create the same effect. And it's really simple, but once you understand how this effect works, you can use it on all kinds of transparent items. So fish fins, all kinds of things like that, that just need to be a little bit transparent. Now this is a little more subtle in the background, but you'll see we'll bring out the wing itself more um, with that, uh, with the color pencil. Now there, the wing extends beyond the background, so I'm just going to give a little touch of color just to kind of bring the wing and the background together, even though it extends out past, you see there? Perfect. Okay. And uh, I think we're going to wait and let this dry, and then we can jump on into the next layer. But I think before we do that, let's take the same color that I created uh, there. It's just the French Ultramarine and the purple. Let's just around the hairline here. You know, this seems weird, but we're going to give... Let's tie in the background to the shadows of the face. So I'm painting right on through all this line work for right now. And we're just going to create a basic shadow shape. I'm trying not to mess with the paper too much here, just to keep its um, surface. Just lifted a little color there. I think that should be quite nice once it's dry. Now I'm softening the edges and what I do here is I take the water out of it and I just soften the edges so that there's no harsh water line where the edge of the watercolor meets the dry of the paper. And let's let that dry. All right, so I'll meet you back here when this is all dry in maybe an hour or so. Usually what I do is I go and I do other things, forget about it completely, and then I come back. So, I'll see you then. Bye. Alright, welcome back. Um, I've let this dry for several hours, and you can see it's completely dry now. We're going to go forward and start using color pencils now. Um, so, for this part, I'm going to focus on the face and then we'll work through all the other little details. So we're going to start with, <laughs> let's see, 
862. This is Burnt Sienna 10% by Crown Dash Luminance. If you're still enjoying this video, please don't forget to give this video a like, a thumbs up, and um, don't forget to subscribe to Isabel's channel if you haven't already. Uh, she's amazing for the community, and thank you again so much, Isabel, for doing this with us. So let's get going. I'll start out on the hairline. Just under the hairline is usually always dark, so it's a really great place to start. Okay, so now I have to think about where the light is coming from. So I would like it to come from sort of above and also a little bit behind her so that she's a little bit backlit. I think that'll give her a glow that will be really pretty with all the snow. And so for that type of lighting scenario, what I want to do is I want to establish the lights in the dark. So I'm going to just use this pencil. I like the color. So I'm just going to do a really light layer that will darken up as we go. But just to kind of establish where the lights and the darks go, so we're gonna decide where her cheekbone is right now. So we're gonna go, it's gonna go somewhere around there. You can see here. And I'm using such a light, light pressure. Just getting that color down. Now, of course, we'll we'll be doing many layers. Okay, so we've established where the cheekbone is and that che dark area of the cheek. Let's see. Well, we're gonna need to fade this on up, so let's do that really quick. But let me just even this out a little. Okay, hope that this is in focus. There we go. So we're going to gently fade this on up into her face. And I like this, it's a pinky kind of flesh tone. That's really good for wintertime scenes because you tend to have a little bit of a flushed color when you're outside. Not everybody, but a lot of people, especially those like me with a ruddy complexion, we tend to get very pink when we're outside for a long time. So now I'm just sort of going right under this nose guideline that Hannah has given us. And I'm going to... We'll see if Abby wakes up and comes joins us again. She's sleeping right now, so I thought it'd be a good time to try to draw with you. All right, so we have the base of the nose area there. Let's also define right under the lip here. There's not a line there, but I'm just sort of creating like a little triangle from where the curve of the lip meets the chin. It's just a little triangle right there. Kind of give it some shadow. And let's also, let's work on the eye area too and do the same thing. So right, right here where the eyeball meets the skin around it. I'm just going to put a little darkness there. So that's sort of like the eye socket, and then let's let's bring her eye socket around there. So there's her eyelid, and there's some darkness above it, just the crease of the eye, basically. 
Those of you who do makeup know exactly what I'm talking about. And so then let's bring the shadow, which can be darker. Let's bring that down, connect it to that, crease down there. Like so. Okay, so we're already starting to get sort of a basis of where the shadows go. But th this is by far not finished yet. And I'm going to try and keep it as simple as I can. Make this a quick little tutorial. All right. So we've, we've got the basis for a lot of the shadows here. There's her ear. And the shadow under her hairline there. Her ear. I'm just skipping this earring for now. We'll, we'll get to that. I'm just drawing around it and uh, not worrying about it for now. Okay, I'm just sort of working out the basic details, but not getting really fussy yet. We can come back. All right, so already we, we have a pretty good foundation for where the lights and the shadows are on her face. So now let's go down into her neck. And what I like to do is I like to treat all of the skin with the same layers and be consistent. So that way I don't have to remember the order or the pressure that I applied for each color. So we're going to do the neck at the same time as the face throughout the drawing to keep it all flowing and consistent. So you can see here I'm just working behind that big earring. We'll, we'll work on the shadows and everything later. What I'm doing now is just the basic shadows of the neck. So drawing around these flowers, all this stuff. We'll, we'll tackle that later. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see, so we have now the d the neck will be darker than most of the face because it's lower down, so it's farther away from the light source, and it's also being shadowed by her face and this big earring, so we'll get to that. But there's at least a basic layer to get us going. Um, another thing I want to do, let's just really quick... Okay, of course I forgot that I only have 10 minutes for each little video segment, so um, you guys have missed me putting in this um, pen work, which I'm really sorry about. Um, so what I used is the Micron 005, this is the Sakura Pigma Micron, and this is the smallest um, pen that you can get from this brand, it's the, the 005. And what I did is I just really quickly went through and added eyelashes and just sort of gave darks to the... just right here that little curve of the nose and just a little tiny bit of that lip there and um yeah i'm really sorry that i didn't catch that on camera but let's move forward this is burnt sienna 50 percent and it's luminance number 866 all right so this is uh the sister color if you will to the one that we were just using so I'm just going to bring out more of those darks. And somewhere around here, let's say, I'll 
let's put in a little more darkness. And here's where I'm using a really light touch, just going over where we've already established the shadows, just deepening up the darker areas by the ear and, and down here on the neck. Yep, still recording. <laughs> now I'm going to be nervous about that the whole time. Oh man. It's been a while since I've done these videos. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I think I actually want to bring the hair kind of cut down a little more. There we go, just to sort of be more soft around the ear. And let's see, this area will be dark. And again, this isn't, this isn't as dark as we're going to take it, but for right now, this is just helping us establish where all of the darks go. So I'm figuring things out. It does not have to be perfect. As long as you're having fun, that's the most important part. So I'm sorry I kind of jump around. It's just sort of a habit. Kind of get a sense of how everything develops if you work all at once. Um... Uh, there's a lot of ways everybody works differently, so if that's not comfortable to you, that's totally okay. Um, I can just only show my way of doing it, that's all. Alrighty, so we've got building up of some darks in our skin. I think now at this point, kind of want to start putting in the shadows for this earring, I think, because I'm going to lose it and I'm already having a hard time seeing the out outside shape now. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So what I'm doing is just outside the lines here, since I know the light is coming from here, everything will be on the other side. So I know that here will be darker for sure. And where is this? This is just a circle. So let's just kind of establish this out, outer edge here so we don't lose it. So there's... There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know? I mean, when we color pages... We do put our own spin on things, so if it's different in the end, that's totally okay, too. Uh, yeah, but this is helping me see what, what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. And you see I'm sort of putting more heavy, heavy, heavy emphasis, rather, on the places below the earring. But using the shape as a guide. So I'm, I'm trying to create the same shape, but as a fuzzier outline. And this is kind of a fun exercise. Always good to practice shadows. Okay, so now as we get closer to the light, I'm going to start Basically, only putting the shadows on this side and leaving off the other side. And 
And using a lighter touch as well as we go up towards the light. This is her jawline there. Just extend that into the center a little. Oh, and we have to do the center, so let's just put a little line there. All this will be in shadow, right? And that'll be in the light, so we're good there. And then this guy here, just right underneath. Okay, and then there's a, see I'm losing this line, so let's just get that back. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Alright. So now let's go back to, let's see, let's, let's put some of this color in her features. So right under her nose, and let's blend out this really dark black pen we put down with this color here. Let's also extend that color and let's it, let's do the same. Let's soften this black we put down and I'm gonna just extend her mouth just a little bit to right there. There we go. And let's also put some right here in the crease of her eyelid and the darkest part in the corner of her eye, like that. All right, this is Beige Red 132. It's called something different in older sets, but um, just go by the number on the pencil, 132, and that'll tell you what you're looking for. Looks like little Miss Abby is still sleeping, which is just fine. So let's connect this corner of the eye here to the little bump here of the nostril. And let's also bring, so let's bring this up a little. Mm -hmm, like so. And let's go down just below the nose and kind of soften that. I hope that this is coming across okay. And let's also bring this color up into the nostril a little bit more. There we go. Like that. And now let's also, so let's, let's work up here now. Kind of do the same thing. We're basically, we're blending that darker shadow area now into the lighter parts of the face. So now I'm kind of using a little bit more pressure and going over the other colors we put down. Alright, and now I'm going to continue to work that on down the face. So I'm using circular motions now and a little bit more pressure. The polychromos sort of require that pressure, but it's good. It also helps with blending. So I do prefer to put many layers down over just going in really hard at first. So you can see this color is much more peachy than the the other colors we were using from Luminance, but having those redder tones underneath really give her a very rosy 
complexion, which is just what I was going for. So that's lucky. <laughs> okay. You can see how the harder pencil is sort of pushing that soft pencil down into the cracks of the paper, starting to meld it together. Very nice how quickly that comes together. All right. And I said I'm going to try and keep it simple, so I will. Hopefully, we're only going to use a couple colors for the face. Okay, so now as we get down darker, I'm actually going to lighten up the pressure, and you'll see why. But I do want to still include this color, even if I'm going to put less of it down. But this is just giving it a little too much of a warm hue now. I want it to feel a little cold as we get down. So I'm only putting a little bit. It's not as deep of a color that I have on the cheek here. Okay, all right, so now we're going to swap on over to another color. What, what now is drawing my eye is the fact that we really haven't addressed the eye or the mouth at all. So I want to go ahead and do that. Just sort of take it off my to-do list, if you will. So for the eye itself, I'm going to use um, Polychromos number... 181 which is Payne's gray and I love this color for the details around the eyes so we're going to just gently lay in a shadow for just under the lash line I'm also going to put a little bit of this right in the crease like so. And then I also want to add some of this to the eye itself. So what we want to do, I want to create a little bit of light. So I'm going to just circle that so I don't color it. And right around the outside there. And this is almost black, which is really nice. It's a really dark gray. So I'm going to swap on over to Polychromos 187, which is Burnt Ochre. Okay, so where I'm going to put this is the bright spots right here on the bottom of the iris. Like that. And now we're swapping over to Polychromos 283. This is Burnt Sienna. And I'm just going to fill in right around, right under that lash line, and then also right there. I'm also just going to use this color just to sort of add a little detail right around the hairline and also her eyebrows. Let's just put those in really quick. So what I'm doing is I'm starting at the base of the brow and flicking upward in a feathered motion. And you can rotate the paper as well if this helps you. And you just want to kind of soften up the pressure as you create the end of the stroke. And that'll really give you a nice soft eyebrow. Already she looks much better. <laughs> All right, so really quick. Let's just put in a little bit more of this. I love to tie in the colors of the eyebrows and the hair. 
190, which is Venetian red and polychromos. Kind of work my way up, softening as I go. Like that. And then I'm also going to, let's put this in the bottom lip. So what I'm doing is just right here from the corner of the mouth to the base of her lower lip here but I've left a little space there and I like this color also for just putting a little bit of color on the end of her nose so let's put some she's cold and outside right so let's just put a little right here on her nostril and right underneath you know how your nose gets a little red when it's cold so that's kind of what I'm going for here just a little touch of that color so now let's swap to polychromos 131 this is coral and um, it might this one again might be a different name um, for other uh, older sets but just go by the number and just under the darkest part, in that middle there, I'm just going to put a little of this color. Kind of feather it down. I want to leave some of the white of the paper. And I'm going to just soften this color up. And also just soften on the outside as well. And I'm going to also bring this color up to the very top of her upper lip. Okay. Let's actually soften the base here a little bit. There. Now, um, I like this color also in her cheek a little bit, so let's just put that on in while we have it in our hand. I'm just layering in a very subtle layer, but it'll tie her features in. And it just gives a little more of that rosy complexion that I'm going for. And I think maybe a little bit right here. There we go. Yeah, I like that a lot actually. Let's put a little bit more. I think let's put a little bit, before we move on though from this color, let's put a little bit of this also in her ear. In the shadow of her ear and also her ear itself. Because again, our ears get really pink in the cold. So you just got to kind of think about that. Feels like it's a little bit of a mess right now, but we'll get it fixed up. Okay. I'm going to grab the Polychromos 169. This is Caput Mortal. So first I'm just going to test the color and the combination. Make sure it's okay. And I usually do this in areas where it's darker, like under the hair. That way, if I mess it up, it's not, not as big of a deal. Easier to fix. But it looks like this is going to be okay. Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm just going around the features that need to be avoided, like the earring and the hair. And don't worry if you lose some of it. We can always add back detail. So you can see I'm just sort of 
adding in details, putting in the darks where I think they should go. <laughs> All right. It's looking a little bit better, but I still feel like it's too bright. There we go. And you see right now it looks really dark, but once we put in the dark hair, things will start to work itself out pretty quickly. Okay. Okay, we can get that all sorted. So the back of her neck here will be quite dark. And now I'm just sort of blending in this color in with the other colors we already laid down. Just softly layering. And they just mix on their own. Going around these little flowers. Let's see. Whoop. All right. Okay, so inside this earring now feels too light. So I'm just going to kind of outline around where these bumps are, just to help me out a little bit. Kind of even up that color in in the middle of that earring there with what's going on outside and around it and I think at some point we're going to have to swap to her hair just to get a good sense of how that's going to mesh together so, but we'll get there, we'll get there <laughs> okay All right, and I do like this color, so I'm just going to work again just to kind of keep everything feeling like it's part of the same drawing. I like to work all of the colors in around the face to keep a consistent feeling. And let's actually put a little bit more right here around her brow bone area, her eye socket, let's put a little of this right to down here.
be a little color right here and right here at the lash line. All right, so now I'm going to jump back to uh, 283 here. This is Burnt Sienna from Polychromos. And let's let's start putting in the hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow uh, Hannah Carlson's line work as best as I can. And just start to put in some of these dark areas. But it doesn't have to be perfect. So if you don't get it exact, don't freak out. <laughs> And we'll we'll get we'll get it all sorted out. So what I'm doing is I'm just having some fun putting putting some lines down. Sort of taking care of that area that is starting to look really messy. Mm-hmm. Already getting better. So we just gotta keep working at it. So this is just the first layer, and what we'll do is we'll come back and layer over it once we get this all going. And just to start us off, it really does help to give context when you have some of the area around the face going. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So what I love to do is I love to take the line art and use that as inspiration, but if I go off of the lines a little, if it's not perfect, that's okay. You know, no one's perfect. If we're having fun, we're enjoying ourselves, that's the biggest thing right there. So this is really starting to help give me a sense of where all the shadows are going. Just like we did for the face. Alright, so we're back at it. And hopefully the light hasn't changed too much. So I'm still using the same color. This is Polychromos 283 Burnt Sienna. I'm just trying to 
trying to sort out what's going on, really. The lines are faint, so I really have to work to see where they're at. That's alright, we'll get there. And if you're not sure, then just make something up. Like, I'm not sure what's happening here because of the watercolor. So let's just say we have a... That could be right or could be wrong, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. You can already see it start to take shape. This really will help give it some context. Now I'm going to leave the area behind the wings alone for now. You'll see why. So we'll, we'll go around them. Alright, so this is another area. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but we're just going to make something up. I can kind of see the lines, so hopefully they're somewhat similar. Here we go, I can see. There's one here, one here. So I'm just worrying about the shadows for now, and then we can come back in later with more colors. This just helps establish really a, a context for her face. So it's not just floating out there. So I've kind of lost where we are here. Well, that's okay. I'm gonna just leave that for now, not worry too much. There we go. Alright, so that's a really good base for her hair. Now we kind of have a sense of where everything goes and how it'll all kind of fit together. Alright, so now I want to swap back over to her skin now that we kind of have a better idea of how the hair will look. And what I want to do now is kind of tie the face and the skin tone into the background. And the way that I'm going to do this is via the shadows. So that's why they look unfinished still. I'm going to work in a layer of... Uh, this is light cobalt blue, and this is poly, or I'm sorry, luminance 661. Let's work along the hairline, as we've done in the past, just to kind of figure out how this will blend together. Yeah, and you see this is just giving it like a cooler tone.
And what's great is layering this really soft pencil over all those layers, it's really starting to meld together now. And don't worry if you go a little too far on this, we can always work it back into the softer color of the burnt sienna. But just sort of getting a base idea of how this will sort of work. So I'm going to stop it about there and we're going to blend that out in a different way. So I'm just going to keep continuing down anywhere where there would be shadows. We want this cool blue tone. And this is really starting to tie that background color in. So now it feels like there's like ambient soft blue. I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but it's very obvious here. So I'm just going to layer in a couple of layers of that. Also work that in along the edge of the hair. So it's already kind of happened up here, but not as much down here. So let's go ahead. And that's the wings. There we go. Maybe a little bit right here. Just to give that area of the hair a little more blue to it. So we have Burnt Sienna, 10%. This is 862. And we're going to keep working on her face here. So I'm just going to start extending that shadow up through her face. So I'm going over that blue color we put down. And going over those pinks. Oops, sorry. Now this is a soft pencil, so you don't need to put too much pressure. You can see it's very easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this color gently on up through her cheek here and her eye socket and the crease of her eyelid. I'm just going to kind of Don't worry if you need to take your time doing this, that's totally fine. It's not a race, there's no rush. You go at whatever speed works for you. Always feel free to pause the video at any time that you'd like. There's also a speed up button if I go too slow. <laughs> so you can see here I'm just sort of adding more of this color in our shadow areas and I like to develop the shadow slowly over time and kind of build them up Alright, so now I want to kind of connect this area under her chin here, right here, or under her lower lip rather, on her chin, to somewhere about here I would say. So I'm just going to gently lay that in. And I carry that on through up until about the corner of her mouth, we'll take that. So 
you can see I'm just working in layers slowly, kind of building that color on the paper there. All right, that's getting better. All right, and then also let's just create a little bit of a shadow around her nose here. Now if you extend this more farther down, she'll look older. And if you omit it completely, she'll look younger. So that's up to you how far you want to take that. Now it's amazing what so few colors can do, but I do want to probably add another layer of color over this one. But it is definitely getting closer to what I imagined, so that's good. What we're going to do is gently bring this down. Now I always err on the side of too light of a hand and favor layering, especially in the soft gradients of a skin. So let's switch to 132 beige, beige red in the polychrome loves. This might be called something different in your set, so go by the number 132. And I'm just layering over top of that color. And I'm sort of avoiding the areas where the blue is because this is a much more orange color than the one we were using previously, which was more of a pinky gray color. So this will keep it from getting muddy. And this one too, I'm not putting too much pressure down. I'm letting the color sort of work itself into the grain of the paper. It's 
let's see here. So now that I have the main lighter areas of the face pretty much blocked in here, I think at this point what we're going to work on now is bringing some of that blue glow in, but in a really delicate way. I think she's pretty much there as far as her cheeks area. Yeah, maybe just another few small passes. So the only areas that we have the white of the paper, it's actually very few areas. We have right here, right here, right there, and just a little bit on the chin. Right here, I'm going to fill in with some color. This warm peachy color. It's really nice. Okay, let's see here. So we are going to be using now... There we go. Light cobalt blue. That's number 661 in the Illuminance set. And what I'd like to do is just accentuate a little bit more this blue color right at the edge. It's not quite blended in, so I'm just really gently going in, adding a little bit more, just now that I see it all together. And like right here, maybe even a little more in her hair, because I really like that look here. What we're trying to do is just create a really soft, wintry glow sort of look. And we can do that by just adding this blue and in the shadows and we'll be using so I'll do a couple of quick demonstrations for what I would do for the flowers so I'd probably use the same color and 
in the shadows of the flowers just to give it a really beautiful icy blue undertone. And I think these are supposed to be poinsettias, but we can break the rules, guys. We can make them whatever color you want, so you don't have to follow my video. Alright, and I'm going to make the center dark blue too, or light blue rather. This light cobalt blue is really pretty. So just going over the outlines of that little flower there, and then I might Alright, so adding a little of this color in there. So for this bit, I'm going to use the Micron 005. This is a really small fine liner, and I just want to add small touches of black here and there. I want to accentuate her eyelashes, which sort of got lost a little there with the color pencil over it. And just under her eye. Like that. Same right here. Okay, and then I want to just accentuate some small parts of the earring. So this would be fairly well in shadow. Let's just pick a couple other spots. So maybe like here. There and here. Okay, yeah, let's, let's do one of those. This new color to our repertoire, this is in Polychromos 2, 3, 4, Cold Gray 5. Don't want a blunt point for this because there's small little details here. So let's carry on with what we are doing, and we're just going to do some little touches around her face, just that you can really see how this will come together. So you can see I'm mostly just outlining the circles that are already drawn for us by Hannah. And I'm mostly working on the bottom half of the circle and kind of leaving the top half as it is. So remembering that the light is coming from above, I really want to try to remember that. Okay, if you don't have it perfect, because 
light can refract and do all kinds of funny things. So you can chalk it up to funny light if you got it. All right. So now that we've got most of that worked out, let's, let's also really quickly just give this but I'm gonna kind of leave it go at the top here where it'll be catching the light and let's also sort of work our way through these little there we go So you see I'm working on the outer part here because the light would be catching but then over here it would be on the other side and you know what I may have lost some of these outlines but that's okay Nothing has to be perfect, guys. Alright, so then we have inner gems, and I'd like them to be all diamonds, but you can make them any color you like. And I'm just going to start putting some triangles and inner details inside these shapes here. And again, they don't have to be perfect. Also using this color behind it as well, just to add a little more shadow. You can see, you can jump around, do whatever makes you happy. Cutie. We have little Miss Abby coming to visit. Hey, cutie.
can see I'm just treating the gems in a similar way, but not exactly the same. Variation is nice in this situation. Right, Em? Alright, so this is 661 light cobalt blue. So you can layer it over top of the gray that you put down or add it separately. Oh, sorry, little kitty. And just adding it here and there will give. Just a little more of an icy feel. Just here and there. Wherever you feel. <laughs> of course, I end up going out of the lines as usual. Oh, hello, Anne. Blending in the gray that I put down with that blue. You can see that once I had the earring in place, it makes finishing up this area a lot easier. So the earring might not be completely finished, but having it there really does help. So for this I'm going to be using Spencer Newton Designer Squash in Permanent White. I have it right here on my palette so you'll see me dipping my brush into it and what I'm using here is a 10 over 0 Craft Smart round brush. This is just a cheap brush you can get. Any kind of um, golden tack on brush will give you a lot of control. And it's good for this kind of thing. Okay, so first, I just want to get, get my paper. Now I'm going to rotate my page, and you'll see um, this makes it a little easier to get your, your hand flowing in the direction that you're trying. So you can just see I'm just going by the general shape that we already have here with Hannah's beautiful drawing, but if if the details get lost somewhere along the way, 
Feel free to make up your own. That's the beauty about coloring. She can do whatever your heart desires. So you can see here the wings that we sort of uh, we painted through and we kind of ignored are now going to be brought out by this white gouache. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So just have some fun and you know if you can't quite see where the lines are that's okay and I think there was a circle frame yes there was so let's also let's see can we even see it So what I'm doing, I know it had dots, but I don't remember where the dots were. So I'm going to sort of <laughs> do my own thing a little bit here. And just take the inspiration from Hannah's drawing. Since I can't really see where the original line art is, sort of <laughs> take liberty and license to sort of do whatever now see I can start to see it now here so I'll stick to it you can see we're just being uh, patient taking time let's do another little doodle. Maybe we'll finish this off at the top here with some dots. It kind of gets lost here and that's okay because I'm going to add some snow and other things so I'm not too fussed about going all the way around like that. So, you know, here I can sort of see where those dots are, so I'll put them in. But once I start to lose them, I'm not as fussed. So maybe I'll do a little, another little decorative. And these things sort of remind me of like an art kind of frame something like that since there's flowers and stuff under here I feel like that's totally fine to do that then we have let's make sure that I'm in focus and in frame I'm gonna rotate the page so I can see a little better Let's put some more dots. Okay, so now I want to add some more detail to the wings. Now that we have kind of the frame figured out a little more, let's, uh, let's add some more to these wings. 
Okay, so let's see if we can see what we're doing. So this, you can see how it kind of broke up a little, but that's going to be just fine. That's, that's a dry brush right there, so you can add a little more water if you don't like that. Let's do that. You can see it's it's all about just sort of getting in the flow of things. It doesn't have to be perfect or all the lines. You can just feel free. To do what works for you. And the reason I like wash is it is something that you can uh, put colored pencil over if you so desire. Okay, so there's a couple more white lines I want to put in. And then we can let that dry. So it's already starting to look like more of a wing, but that will be even more pronounced once we get all the details in. Alright, so since I have the white gouache out, I'm also going to add a little more. Let's add some sparkle. Some dots here and there. Just gives a little something extra. And if don't be afraid if you get rid of too much of the white of the paper, you may need to put some back. There's always a way. And this can be done with a lot of different types of paint. Gouache is one of my favorites.
So for this bit, I'll probably be using some more of the <laughs> Windsor and Newton Designers gouache in permanent white. Also, I'll be using the Daniel Smith Luminous Luminescent Watercolors in Duochrome Aquamarine. Also, I'll be using the Daniel Smith Duoco Duochrome Aquamarine. Also, I'll be using the Daniel Smith Duochrome Aquamarine. And probably as well the Daniel Smith Pearlescent Shimmer. I love the Daniel Smith watercolors for their um, shimmery watercolors, but they can be quite pricey. So it's good if you buy a big tube like this to share some with your friend. All right, so I already have them in pans. They've already hardened and dried out, so I applied some water to my palette just recently and let that set for a while and kind of get the get the palette uh, ready to work. So let's get into it now. I'm going to start out first by just um, using some of the designer's gouache, the white designer's gouache by Winsor & Newton. And um, I have done spatter techniques in the past in other videos but for this one I want to deliberately place snowflakes and actually for some of them paint them out um, so for example anywhere where I don't like where the salt technique has kind of um, gotten it, it you know didn't do it what I expected then you know I'm just painting those and you can see here, I'm painting fairly large circles, and that's because snow can tend to be especially that big, fluffy, wet snow can tend to get rather large, so it doesn't have to be tiny little specks. And they don't have to be regular shape either. You can do some little dashes, because snowflakes can be... Um, you know, flat on one side. All right. So this just takes some patience. We're actually going to speed this process up so that way I'm not taking up too much of your time. Okay, so now that we've done a bunch of snowflakes in the background, I'm also going to use this same white gouache to do some other elements surrounding her face, like for example these flowers. Now there's some outlines that you can still see that I would just like to cover, so I'm going to use this white paint do that. Also maybe add some snowy details on the flowers on the stems, anywhere where there might had snowfall on it. And I really do want this frame to stay fairly monochrome, so this is a great way to do that. Just by adding white highlights. So you can kind of see how that's going to go. I'm going to do the same technique throughout. I'll actually pull it closer, and that way you guys can see better what I'm up to. So of course you can just do whatever you feel is right. You 
Oh, right. And also, what I would like to do as well is just add a little bit more detail to, um, while I'm doing that, I'll probably add some more detail to places like her earrings, you know, just putting little dots here and there, and also her wings, but we'll do this, we'll do this separately. Let's, let's speed up this, um, leaf painting process a little. You get the idea of what I'm up to, so now let's, uh, speed that up as well. And now I just like to add some more sparkle and detail to the wings themselves. And there's a great example there of how it looks different. Let's see. How it looks different on different surfaces. On the light there versus the dark here. But it's a really subtle, pretty shimmer. So now I'm going to... Oh, let's focus that back up. Now I'm going to also use the pearlescent, which is more transparent and doesn't really give a color. So I'm going to use this in, in a much more liberal fashion. And this is super sparkly and pretty, but again, really subtle. So we might opt for stickles or something more bold at the very end. But this, it, this does bring out quite a lot of sparkle and shine. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera. You can see it's transparent, but as it dries, it lightens up a little, and it's really sparkly. So let's also put this, I just want to go ahead and put this on her hair a little, in places, especially where I've put the snow. And you see the snow is already sort of dry, so that's great because that allows us to sort of work this over top of it. So again, just a little shimmer. Not a lot. Let's also put a little bit of white gouache just right here. There we go. Where the light might be hitting it. And see all these little details kind of come out at the end. Right, I think that's fairly good. So I'll, I'll wait until this dries completely and then I'll show you guys the finished result um, without the paint being wet so you can see exactly how shimmery this stuff is. Alright, 